On the 2nd of December 2023, I high bar squatted 300 kilos, achieving a goal I've had for a very long time. The purpose of this video is slightly different to our normal videos. Normally we share with you what we think is best from logic, experience, research and more to give you the best advice for your training. This video, however, is a little bit different. This video is a recording of my personal history, a biography of that training block, simply a description of what I did and not what I think you should do. You may learn some things from this, but it's not intended as a roadmap to your own 300 kilos. I may try squat more in the future, or I may move on to other things, but I want this to be on record in detail, so please do enjoy. So the desire to squat 300 kilos goes so far back into my training history that I'm not sure when it first began. In my mind, I've always wanted to do it and kind of believed I always could. The first time I touched the bar and plates for the back squat was the day before I turned 18. I did 120 for a set of five, Asked the grass at about 72 kilos body weight in my hand-me-down weightlifting shoes from my older brother. As the years went by, big landmarks came and went, like squatting 200 kilos for the first time, but instead of doing it for a single, I did it for a triple. Eventually I would go on to hit 290 kilos in May of 2017 after a very grueling training block where I sacrificed time with the Olympic lifts to try and hit 300 kilos. This 290 was a 20 kilo PB for that training block and it was all I had. I knew I would come back for 300 kilos someday, I just didn't know for sure when. Fast forward to the start of 2023, where I'm in the worst squatting shape of my life. I'm weightlifting once a week, squatting about once every three weeks, I'm a new father, and I'm focusing on jiu-jitsu about four times a week. My body weight was the lowest it had been in nearly a decade at 96 kilos after a crazy water cut for a comp, although usually I was around 102 kilos. I was, however, the fittest I'd ever been since I'd been playing field sports. So in July of 2023 of that year, Dara, Clarence, Zach and I were headed to Tokyo to train with none other than Toshiki Yamamoto himself. Deciding that I couldn't possibly show up in anything but my best squatting shape, I set upon training with a new vigour. I was treading water up until this point with my training goals, knowing that something would present itself and this trip was it. The list of training goals for this block were as follows. Squat 300 kilos a heavy deadlift, a heavy behind the neck jerk, a heavy clean, and get my blue belt in Jiu Jitsu. For the purpose of this video, we'll just focus on the squat programming. So I started off walking the walk and decided it made perfect sense to run our very own RTA squat program. It had worked for literally thousands of athletes, and I couldn't think of a single reason not to do it, other than that it was very difficult. So first I needed a max to use, and set about maxing my squat after hardly squatting for about five months and I failed 220 kilos. I don't think I've ever failed a rep with 220 kilos since the first time I squatted it. I don't mean like, oh, I misgrooved it. If I go again, I'd get it. No, I failed 220 kilos. 200 kilos was my current max for this training block. It didn't matter though. I knew it would take as long as it takes and it would come back. I began the RTA like a good student and finished my first run in eight weeks with 240 kilos for one at the end of it. Now, however, I knew I was capable of more, so I doubled 240 kilos a week later, and then a week after that, I hit a fast 250 kilos. So that was run one of the RTA completed, 50 kilos onto my squat. I took a week downtime to enjoy our weightlifting camp in Portugal and hit a 220 kilo for seven in a nice AMRAP style, which lines up with 250 kilos. With no time to waste, I restarted the RT with a max of 250 and hit the ground again, back into the tens and back into the infamous week four day two. The day before we flew to Japan from London, I hit 205 kilos for three by eight. I knew I could do it, but I was a little nervous. And if you know, you know. Now I had planned to keep going with the RT until I hit 300 kilos, but that all changed when we met Tashiki. During an interview with Tashiki, I asked him what his squat programming looked like for his 321 kilo squat. He used to do um, five times a week, he would do five by five, and then after that he would do uh, three sets of ten, but just with one minute, one minute rest in between. Five by five, five times a week? Five by five, and then drop, like lower the weight, yeah, yeah. and then do ten reps for three sets with one minute rest, yeah. and he would do that five times a week. Five, five by five, five times a week, drop three by ten. Nobody tried that. He said five by five, then three by ten, five days a week for about three months until he hit 260 kilos five by five and 170 kilos for three by ten then he took a week off and hit 321 kilos yep you heard that right he wasn't lying either as some people thought you can go to his youtube and follow along with the dates until he hits 321 kilo 
I knew as soon as I heard this that I had to try it. I knew I would have to adjust it at some point. I knew it went against everything that made sense in programming. I knew I would need to change it as the months went on. And I knew it would probably take me longer to hit 300 kilos than if I just kept doing what I was doing. But I just could not turn down an attempt at the challenge. That same day, I hit 240 kilos for a set of four, which was two plus reps on this training block and pretty good progress for approximately 265 to 270 is where I felt I was at. The very next day, I did 150 kilos 5x5 and 3x10 at 100. Then the following day, I did 200 kilos 5x5 and 3x10 at 100. Then once we hit Korea, I did 220 kilos 5x5 and 100 kilos 3x10. Now, I won't bore you with every single training session, but that 220 kilos was technically a PB 5x5. I was definitely capable of doing it before, but I simply never did it, and you're a fool if you don't count PBs when you hit them, even if they may seem trivial. The next eight weeks, I squatted as heavy as I could for the 5x5 and 3x10 for straight sets. Five times a week until I hit 230 kilos, 5x5, and then a top set of 240 kilos, 3x5. So up until this point, I was aiming to hit a moving average unless I felt very good and I went heavier. But three days out of the five, I would hit something like 190 5 by 5 then maybe 200 5 by 5 then 210 kilos 5 by 5 until I hit the larger milestones. The other two days of the week, I would hit something like 120 kilos or similar for the same rep scheme, but much less weight. At this point, I dropped all other lifts, no pulls, no cleans, no jerks, just squatting, cardio and jiu-jitsu. So this is where I began to change it further. Instead of hitting straight sets, I needed to hit heavier top sets, but still keep the volume high. So I slowly began working up in 10 kilo jumps, counting these lifts as the five by five. So a session might look like two by five at 200, one by five at 210, and then maybe two by five at 200, then drop back down to the three by 10. Around this time, I hit 240 kilos for a set of six barefoot and beltless in Malta with some of my great friends because I left all of my training gear at home, a further two more reps on my 240 AMRAP. Now, this is where I changed the program further. It was time for me to start hitting some singles regularly. Now I'm nowhere near as good at singles as Toshiki and I need plenty of practice in the right spots. So a week after 240 by 6 I hit 270 kilos for a single. So this was two full months out from hitting 300 kilos. This in my opinion is where things started getting pretty real. Up until this point I hadn't really hit any true PBs or at least that's how I thought of them. Nothing was real progress towards 300 kilos. The big goal before I changed the program was straight sets at 5x5 five five at 240 kilos. This was a true and undoubted PB. So every session I could, I worked up to 240 kilos for 1x5 as many weeks as I could, as many times a week as I could. And this started out at once a week until eventually it was about three times a week for a top set of 240 kilos for 1x5. At this point, I also dropped the 3x10 as it was pointless extra volume. Two weeks after the 270, I hit a, a very nice 280 kilos, the heaviest squat I had hit in six years. Things were ramping up until one fateful evening, I hit 240 kilos 5x5. Five five. This particular evening, I was wrecked, but I wanted to hit more than one set of five at 240. So I hit the first set and was like, okay, I can definitely do 3x5 tonight. And if I can do 3x5, I can probably do 5x5 five five, and I'm going to damn well keep going until I hit it. Once that was hit, I was truly in the end game. I had four targets left to hit. I needed to do 270 kilos for a set of five, which was an all time rep PB for 270, of which my current AMRAP was three reps at 270. I needed to repeat 290 for single again, my old 1RM. Obviously, one of those is squat 300 kilos. But my biggest enemy of all was squat 240 kilos for double digit reps in one set. Many times I had tried 240 for 10 and failed. You maybe even notice this training block had lots of AMRAPs at 240. I'd hit 240 for 7, 8, 9, 9 in the past, and I needed to hit 240 for at least 10, if not more. So with 240 hit, I just needed to keep my legs ticking over by keeping the frequency high, but the weights low all but one session a week. Now, 240 for 10 didn't make any sense in here, but it didn't matter. There was no way I was leaving this training block alive without hitting 240 kilos for 10 reps or more. I didn't care if it delayed 300 kilos, I had to hit it. Now, the session I planned to do it, let me tell you, this was the second most nervous I've ever been. I was nervous not that I didn't know if I could do it, but I was nervous that the only thing stopping me was my own weakness and giving up on something I was more than capable of doing. 
So fast forward to me finishing the set, disappointing, thinking that I had only hit 10, but annoyed that six years had gone by and I'd only managed to hit one extra rep. But after several minutes of counting, I was able to see that I did 11 reps. I was over the moon. This left two more sessions to complete. 270 kilos for a set of five, and then 300 kilos for a single. I rested up and a week later smashed that 270 for five. Oddly enough, this was the happiest of all PBs, including the 300. I was happy for literally hours after making this. I was buzzing, and for two reasons. One, I knew I was going to hit 300 kilos, and two, I say this as humbly as possible, but how fucking cool is it that I could squat 270 kilos for a set of five high bar? From here, it was plain sailing. A few days later, I hit a beltless 250 kilo pause without shoes or sleeves, and then the big day rolled around. So I asked my wife to take her son and leave the house. I needed a couple of hours alone to prepare. Now this is the one time I took time away from my family to train. 80 to 90% of all other sessions took place at 9 p.m. at night so I could spend every single minute with my family. But on this very day, I needed to focus. Let me tell you, this was the most nervous I have ever been. Drinking a cup of water before I went out to the shed, my hands were literally shaking. I was bubbling with nerves. I normally don't ever play video games outside of Saturday nights, but on this occasion I sat down for about three hours beforehand to play cyberpunk to distract myself. During the warm-ups, I didn't think, I made sure everything was recording, and I just went to town on the weights. I didn't think for one second until I smashed 280 kilos. The plan was always 280 and then jump straight to 300 and that's exactly what I did. So there's the programming. As you can see, it follows pretty much all the principles of what we and many other coaches do. Honestly, I've no idea how Tashiki did what he did. It's truly insane, but I hit my goal and that's what counted for me. So one of the variables that was changed during this training block was I began the training block at 200 kilos and finished at a fridgy 110 kilos. The body weight gain was pretty smooth over the course of 11 months and it works out at about 750 grams per month. At no point was there a concerted effort to gain weight, as I knew a return to real strength training would result in kilos from muscle memory, plus an increase in hunger from training volume, so I didn't really taper my nutrition. About halfway through the block, I recruited the help of Alex Geekle to assist in helping with a non-training related health issue, but Alex turned out to be quite adept in nutrition and supplementation. Alex adjusted things like nutrient timing, increased protein, added the following supplements over the course of the training block, choline, intramarket creatine, tiger milk mushroom, acetylated L-carnitine, lion's mane, metformin, new peps, intramarket carbs, intramarket essential amino acids, hydration quantity, among many other things. The body weight gain was very comfortable up until about 108 kilos. My normal weightlifting body weight was 105 when I was a full-time weightlifter, so an extra few kilos with the large amount of cardio I was doing was fine. Bloods and blood pressure all remained very positive, but once I hit the 110 kilos in the last few weeks, I was pretty uncomfortable. I was thoroughly looking forward to losing the extra weight once I was done. The body weight was incredibly useful, of course, but like a one night stand, I was quick to rid myself of it once it was all over. In terms of injuries, I was graced by the weightlifting gods. Before I detail them, I just want to point out that I am still somewhat shocked nothing worse happened. At no point did any of them hinder progress so much so that a full stop was required. The first injury to crop up was some extreme elbow inflammation on both sides. Now this was not in fact from squatting, but from Jiu Jitsu. With the absence of meaningful weightlifting plus lots of grappling, my elbow joints experienced compression and inflammation. Then with the return to cleans, jerks and high volume squatting, this went into overdrive and I'm still unfortunately dealing with the ramifications. Anytime I racked a bar or did a squat session, my elbows would be somewhere between 3 and 6 out of 10 on the pain scale. Nothing crazy, but still very much present. As I dropped all other movements, I was able to avoid the pain, but had I wished to keep going with them, it would have taken a full-scale effort to address the issue. The elbows, however, did not change any weight selection on any day or stop me squatting, so outside of tactical changes, there wasn't really any issue here. I recruited the help of Dr. Steph of Dr. Steph Performance to assist me in correcting the issue later in the block, and while we're still working hard on it now, the initial phase was to reduce pain, which was done very successfully. Next, my right hip flexor routinely flared up at different points throughout the block for a few different reasons. Firstly, the toe straightforward squat put more pressure on the soft tissue related to flexing and rotating my hips. I spent a lot of time in a shortened hip position, but very little time in true hip extension, i.e. where my knee was behind my hip. 
a toed out squat position assisted but the true fix was the couch stretch daily for about 10 minutes total per leg. Once I kept this up the pain was fairly sure to stay away. Finally the most intense injury of the whole block was quite unexpected but the quare veins tendinosis in my wrist. This was anywhere between 7 to 9 out of 10 on the pain scale for about the last month. Any amount of extension in my wrist was very intense pain. This came purely from squatting with such frequency and weights and it was not leaving until I finished the squat block and reduced the load and pressure. Now while it's fully healed at the moment, I'm still pretty surprised at how painful that was. After 12 years of back squatting, you might think I don't need to focus too much about technique, but in fact every session I was focusing on either refining my technique or reinforcing it at progressively heavier weights. At the start of the training block, I focused on toe straight ahead position, a position I'd used for most of the last few years while squatting. Given that I have a lot of dorsiflexion available, it allowed me to use my knee extensors to the nth degree. I would focus on driving my knees forward from the start and then driving them hard from the bottom of the squat. Coupled with this, I would assume as close a grip on the bar as I could, and my stance was just under my hips. These main points, along with a few others, changed for a good reason as the block progressed. Starting with the foot stance in position, I slowly changed this to a wider stance, about shoulder width, and then changed my toes to a toes out position. I did this for a few very good reasons. First of all, my lower body gained mass, I needed more room for my hips, and related musculature to stay closer to my center of mass at the bottom of the squat. Coupled with this hip flexor injury, it was somewhat less irritating with the toes out position. This toes out wider stance allowed me to more reliably sit in the bottom of the squat and drive through my legs as much as possible. My grip width changed to a wider grip to allow for less pain in my elbows, but here was the biggest mistake of the whole training block, and it's the one that I've had for a very long time and only truly addressed by the last month. My upper back position was very frequently lacking at heavier weights. Right from the jump when I hit 240, I was always losing my upper back position from a rise in elbows as I squatted up. This elbow flare was because my back was so loose and I didn't maintain a solid position. At the same time, I maintained an extended wrist position, which encouraged a looser back even further. The fix was to aim for a straighter and stacked wrist in the rack position, while tensing my upper back as hard as possible throughout the whole lift. This is generally easier with a closer grip. The further you grip apart, the harder it is to maintain the upper back muscles in a rigid and compact position. With the elbow and wrist forcing some adjustments, I eventually ended up with a wider grip but a stronger back position and I was working hard on this up until the session I did 300 kilos. This deserves its own special mention and oh boy was I fatigued for the last 5-6 to six weeks. Up until this point I was pretty energetic daily, aerobic capacity was high, Jiu Jitsu rounds were sharp and I could complete maybe 6-7 to seven rounds without a problem. If this was a marathon, then here I very much hit the wall. Walking up the hill, my car was tiring, my lower back was fried, my sleep quality was deteriorating. My squats were incredibly powerful, so I knew that the work was paying off and that the end was in sight. Nothing was gained without some sacrifice, but I will say, without a doubt, this is the most fatigue I've ever been from a training block. Of course, I never actually thought of quitting as I knew I was getting there, but I did begin to look forward to finishing the training block and getting on with everything else. While I won't say my life suffered in any fashion, it did make daily tasks a little bit more difficult than they needed to. So looking back, there's a few things that would have rounded off the harder bits. First of all, in relation to fatigue, while some of this was of course pushing for heavier weights for 300 kilos, a lot of this was because of the extended nature of the training block. If I'd started off the training block in pretty good shape, I would have made it sooner, reduced the overall length of the training block and been a little bit sharper and fresher by the end of it. Next. Any amount of upper back and single leg work would have helped with the hip pain and the upper back position during squatting. As I did literally none, I was truly relying on specificity to carry me through. While I wouldn't change the program, it does need to be said it was a very inefficient way of getting to 300 kilos. I absolutely loved the training. The singular focus on squats and the unidirectional nature of the sessions was incredible. Just thinking about squatting, just coming into each session for squats knowing this was the main goal was a great experience. I felt free to work in squats and only squats. I didn't need to worry about my snatch or my clean and jerk. However, it did leave me with no capacity to train anything else meaningfully. While I would make the exact same decisions over again, it must be said that there was a lot of wasted training sessions. On the other hand, it does speak to the usefulness of specificity and the benefits of training for one goal at a time. I think I should have been a little bit stricter with my diet for the last few weeks. I was mostly eating to perform and didn't really need the last few kilos. Now I'm not even talking about the slight difference in squat to body weight ratio, I just mean in a disciplined sense. There was no need for the last 2-3 kilos, 
It doesn't matter now and it didn't really matter then, but the principle at all was something that I will take note of in the future. Now, this video may seem maybe egotistical, even hubristic, but the incredible support I received throughout the whole process throughout all the years until I hit this it was and is pretty emotional. I wasn't aware when I started just how many people were waiting to see me succeed. I even joked to Dara that I needed some people to think I couldn't do it for the motivation. But in reality, pretty much everyone believed in me and for that I am very grateful for you all. Thanks to Alex for editing this one and don't forget to check out the Seeky Strength app for the Road to Anywhere Squat program part 1 or part 2 which is left in the description below. It's on iOS and Android and it is almost guaranteed gains on your squat.